when you have to leave, but you forgot your bookmark. No! Hello, gentle viewers, and welcome to another episode of Alistair Reviews It. And today, I'm going to be reviewing Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. So as some of you know, if you watched my favorite books of 2019, this was my favorite book of 2019, and it seemed a shame I didn't actually have a review of it. So I am going to review it now. So it's not a secret that Brandon Sanderson is my favorite fantasy author. But if, if it is a secret, I'm letting the cool cat out of the bag. Cool cat, cool cat and kittens. I'm gonna break this review up into a couple segments. First, I'm going to talk about the world building and magic system. Next, I'm gonna be talking about the story. Then, finally, I'm gonna get into the characters. I'm trying to build a better flow for my reviews because I watched my last one and I thought I thought I did good. I'm a, I'm a little boring. I was a little boring and I was like, there needs to be a little bit more structure to what I do. I'm gonna read from the back and excuse me if I am not pronouncing something correctly. I don't think there, there was a pronunciation guide at the back. Yeah, I don't see a pronunciation guide. Tellier, 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 capital of Helandrian, is a colorful city by the sea where gaily dressed crowds bustle through sunny streets and worship heroes who have been reborn as gods. Ruled by the silent, mysterious god king, the pantheon is nourished by offerings of breath, the life force that keeps them alive and youthful. Exiled in Idris, the former royal family reluctantly betrothed a princess to the god king. Arriving in Tellier, she finds both the city and the marriage are not at all what she expected. Her only ally is Lightsong, a god who is skeptical of his own divinity, who fears the war with Idris is inevitable. Meanwhile, another new arrival to Tellier, one who bears a sentient sword Nightblood, makes cunning plans based on the unique magic of Helandrian, which uses color to focus power of breath, plans that could change the world. So I do want to say here that towards the end of the video, I'll let you know, you can X out of, but I'm, I might talk a little bit about the Cosmere. And if you don't know what the Cosmere is, because you're new to this channel or new to uh, Brandon Sanderson, is basically Brandon Sanderson wanted to create a huge epic series, but he didn't want people to have to commit to reading all of the books. So what he did is he created a world of many worlds, and this is one of those worlds. The Stormlight Archive is another one of those worlds. The books based in Elantrius, the Mistborn series, these are all different worlds within the one world. They'll have small connections to each other. They may even have characters in all of the books that might be slightly connected, but fear not. If you read one, you don't have to read all. However, yay, what he did with this that was pretty unique is he put this online so that as he was editing, his fans could read. When I read it in Afghanistan, I read the online copy. My husband got me this one and it's a little bent up here because we moved. Uh, but I didn't read this copy, I read the online version, which if I can find it, I will link down below. In this magic system, all people are born with one breath, which can be willingly given to somebody else. Breath can be thought of as a soul, it's basically your inner light. This whole magic system is actually called biochromatic breath. It's a system of breaths and colors. You can sell your breath to somebody else, and the more breaths you collect, the more things you can do with magic system. You can use the breaths to heighten your senses. You can use the breaths to awaken inanimate objects and make them do your bidding for a time. You can even use it to awaken waken lifeless things, things that used to have life. And another part of this is the returned, the gods of this whole world are people who were just normal people, but then overnight they passed away and they came back as gods, as as Adonis's gods, you know, kind of like think of the Greek pantheon, like, like beautiful, super tall gods who have millions of breaths inside of them. However, there's a little catch to that where they actually have to consume breaths in order to keep on going. So people uh, worship them or they worship whatever god they want to worship and then they give their breath to them. What's interesting about these gods is each of them has the ability to grant, I want to say a wish, 
is the best way to put it. But in order to do that, they have to sacrifice themselves, which kind of creates a weird imbalance because probably the, the more, not better gods, but I guess the more, more moral gods would be ones to sacrifice themselves a lot earlier than the less moral gods who just want to stay and take everybody's breaths. But that's a different kind of conversation. Let's continue on with the story. So the story follows two princess sisters from Idris, Viviana and Ciri, as one of them goes and is betrothed to the king, the god king of the Pantheon. And we follow her as she goes down there and she experiences all of this by herself because she's not a god, she's not a return. The other sisters involved, I'm not gonna say how because I feel like that's a little spoilery, but these two characters are amazingly fleshed out. And one is supposed to be a princess who is super outgoing, who really wants to break from tradition, who really wants to be her own self. And the other one is actually super strict on herself and really puts a lot on her shoulders. I mean, they both have a lot on their shoulders, but they're both very distinct female characters. And I actually very much enjoy the way Brandon Sanderson writes his female characters, where they feel like female characters instead of feeling like, like how a man would want a female character to be. They're themselves, they're very comfortable in their own skin for the most part and Siri and Viviana are our main characters and then we get into Light Song and Vasher. So Light Song is my favorite character and I think that he had one of the most amazing story arcs throughout this book that I've oh, ever read and it was super super satisfying. I love Light Song. I stan Light Song. And then next is Vasher. Vasher was one of those characters I was reading and I was like I think I've seen you somewhere else. And he was somebody who as a character, I was very attracted to like reading his parts. And I was always curious as to what next he'd do because he was kind of the person who was explaining the magic system as it was happening. He was like, this is what you can do with this magic system in this world. So it was always great when I, I could read from his point of view. So one of the things that was kind of trying for me in terms of when I was gonna start to read it is I read a couple other reviews. There wasn't much action in the books. And usually when I want to read a fantasy book, I want some action in there. But honestly, I disagree. I think there was a decent amount of action. And for what action there wasn't, there was a lot of political intrigue that went into it that was equally entertaining. And I cannot wait. I know Brandon Sanderson is going to do a sequel to Warbreaker. I cannot wait until he does that. I'm probably going to have to wait a while because I read his... He does... Every year he does a State of the Sanderson where he basically lays out, which is amazing. I think every author should do. Lays out all of his books, his projects that he's working on, and timeline of when he thinks he's going to get to a certain and project. I, I do want to talk about two things. I'm about to talk about Cosmere here. Nightblood and Vasher. Nightblood and Vasher. Vasher we see in Stormlight and Nightblood we also see in Stormlight. And I read Stormlight first so I was super excited. I was like what? Nightblood? He had the same kind of personality in Stormlight as he did here and it was super it was, it was like seeing an old friend where you didn't expect an old friend to be like oh How's it going, Nightblood? And then the same thing with Vasher, because I kept reading his stuff and I was like, he kind of reminds me of somebody. And I was like, who does he remind me of? And of course, I, I went and looked it up and it was Zahel in the Stormlight Archive. And I was excited about that. And I'm always super excited when I, when I see the little like pools of the Cosmere kind of coming together. And I, I know that it's probably going to be another like 20 year process for everything to kind of culminate. But darn, I cannot wait. Is darn considered a bad word? Darn, I cannot wait. So as always, the magic system was super intricate and the characters were a joy to get to know. And I can't wait to see them again. And I can't wait to see you guys again. So adios, gentle viewers. Until next time.